We're talking here today about the perseverance of the saints. How can I be a winner, not a whiner? How can I carry through and win the prize, win the gold medal? How can I? How can I be a child of God who perseveres to the end? I'm going to give you these points. Number one, understand and believe the true gospel. I hope you do by now. Would you come over here to the book of Galatians? Galatians chapter 1, no, Galatians 3. We're going to miss a little bit out because we're going to run out of time. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 12. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, the man who does these things will live by them. Therefore, you cannot be saved by your obedience because your obedience is never good enough except Christ's obedience. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. There are a thousand sermons in those words. The Bible tells us that God in Christ became a curse for us on the cross. The sin of the world, your sin and my wretched sin, they were placed upon Christ, and Christ on the cross made a perfect atonement for our sins. If I truly believe in him with all my heart, I'm not talking about a silly little emotional uh, reaction, but if I believe in him with all my heart in true faith, I immediately am given the gift of everlasting life, the forgiveness of sins. It is because of the cross of Christ. That is the true gospel. Look at verse 28 and verse 29. There is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. The Bible tells me it doesn't matter what my race is. It doesn't matter concerning the color of my skin. What does matter is the response of my heart to Christ. And the Bible tells me if I truly believe in Christ, all the promises of Abraham are given to me. This is the word of the Lord. Number one, how can I be a child of God and persevere? Number one, understand and believe the true gospel. I believe that some of you here, after hearing this for so many years, I believe that some of you now understand it. I believe that some of you understand it. Number two, be a disciple. Look at Matthew 28 and verse 19. Matthew chapter 28 and verse 19. Matthew 28 and verse 19. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, make disciples. Now this is a hard word because very few people who go to church want to have the gift of discipleship. The word disciple means one who is disciplined. One who is disciplined and follows Christ. He is a person who lives the life and he walks the walk. Number three, feed on the word, the bread of life. Come over here to Matthew chapter four. If you're not doing this, my friend, then you're not going to endure, I'm telling you. If you're just basing your Christianity upon a lot of faith, you're not gonna last it. You've gotta base it upon the word and you've gotta read the word every day. Matthew 4, then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Every one of us, every day, has something to eat. If we do not eat, eat we are going to starve to death a professing christian will not make the distance if he doesn't feed daily on the word of god people say i'm i'm too tired 
Well, so am I. When I come home from work, I'm too tired. When I get up in the morning, I'm too tired. But you're not too tired to watch television for hours. Mm -hmm. You're not too tired to be playing around with these little gadgets. The Bible says, it, Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. I will give you a testimony. When I was a young man, first called into the ministry 57 years ago, I made a vow. And I vowed to God that I would read his word every day of my life. I've kept that vow. And God has kept me. The great preacher, American preacher, Moody said, lean Christians, that's skinny ones, skinny spiritually, lean Christians own Bibles but feed on newspapers. What would he say today? The word, the word, this word made the stars. This word raised Jesus from the dead. That word has kept me. Number four, share the good news if you want to persevere to the end. Wherever I go on a plane uh, or talking to my broker as I'm trying to get a new building for the Carter Report, I find it so easy to share Christ. I was down talking to my Jewish attorney. He's a great attorney. I'd have been talking to him for a little while and I started to talk to him about why I believe in God, why I believe in the word. He responded. I find people respond everywhere. I find in Australia, when I go over there, if my gardener comes, I find very soon. I'm talking about the word. Are they offended? They think I'm crazy. Well, they don't tell me so. When my painter comes, he's a big, tough Aussie. He likes to drink a lot of beer. He's as tough as they come. I pray with him now. When he's got a problem, he turns to me. I'm calling his girlfriend now and giving her counsel. I am. If I share the word, uh, God blesses me. You say, I don't understand it. Well, that's because you don't really know Christ yet. Fellowship, number five, five fellowship with God's people. Come over here to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, fellowship with God's people. Meet with God's people. Go to church. You say, I, I've given up on going to church. Yes, it shows. It shows. Look at your children. You're losing your children. People say, I'm losing my kids. My kids are terribly rebellious. My children are turning away. I say, do you have family worship? Do you read the word? Do you love your children? Do you take them to Sabbath school? Do you take them to Sunday school? Do you take them to church? No, no. Well, my friend, maybe you're the problem. Look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, hallelujah, by a new and living way open to us through the curtain, that is his body. And since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good works. Let us not give up meeting together. Some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Look at me. On the Lord's day, you ought to be in church. And church ought to be in you. Or you say, well, I'm going to go out to Las Vegas. I'm going somewhere else. I'm going to the great super sale, my friend. Remember what happens to the branch that's broken off. So I don't like to read those texts. You better think about it. The branch is thrown into the fire. 
You ought to come to this church. Ought to be in church next Lord's Day. And if you're somewhere where you can't get to a church, you ought to have a home church. I've gone to home church. You get 20 or 30 believers together. They start on time. They take up the offering. They have two envelopes. <laughs> they study the word. Number six, choose. Listen to this. Choose to be cheerful, hopeful, courageous, forgiving. Let it go. Someone's done a rotten thing to you in the church. Does it happen? Yes, it does. Are there hypocrites in the church? Yes, there are. Are there sheep and goats? Yes, there are. Let it go. Be forgiving. Speak well of others. Don't hold grudges. Don't stop to stone the devil's dogs. Somebody said to me, what does that mean? Don't stop. Daniel said, what does it mean, Pastor God? Don't stop to stone the devil's dogs. Well, the devil's dog wants to bite you. So don't stop to throw stones at him because he's going to come along and bite you. Walk past the devil's dogs. I want you to come to a text here in Philippians. You should read this text every day. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 and onwards. Now, coming to this church service today is going to make you a lot better or it's going to make you a lot worse. If you believe and practice what you're hearing now, it's going to make you better. If you turn away from it, you're going to be worse. It would be better if you hadn't come. Philippians 4, verses 4 to 9, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Look at this now. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, don't listen to lies, whatever is noble, Whatever is right, whatever is pure. How can a Christian hope to be saved if he's watching pornography? He's not going to be. Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Country to the opinion of foolish men and women, it's not easy to follow Christ. We live in, in America today in a pagan society. It's getting more pagan every day, a lawless society, a society that is controlled by a media that is antagonistic to Christian values, a materialistic society that presents a false sense of values. And a lot of you here believe it. You believe it. You're brainwashed by it. How can you persevere if you're going to be in the world and part of the world? You can't be. I want you to come over here to Ephesians. Come over here to Ephesians. Chapter 6, 10 to 13. Ephesians chapter 6, turn to the text. Verses... 10 and onwards. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything to stand, stand therefore. Look at me. You got to stand. You got to draw a line in the sand. You've got to say, 
I am standing. You can fire me, but I'm standing. I'm not here to please you, church members. I am not running a popularity contest. I am seeking to please God. Therefore, I will stand. And if you don't do that, one day you're going to get the mark of the beast, which is conformity to the world. We are not alone. There are many who have persevered, who have fought, who have run the race, who have kept the faith. Come over here to Hebrews chapter 12. We are not alone. We may be in a world of weeds and reeds, but we're not alone. There are still Mrs. Bactrams and other people. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and, and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinful men so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So great a cloud of witnesses. I think of her today, Dr. Julia Ukanar, once an atheist, whom I baptized in 92. Now teaching the Word of God on hundreds of television stations. She's endured. When I go there now, it's not to strengthen her, it's to be strengthened by this Russian woman in Nizhny Novgorod. One of my heroes has always been for many years John Wesley, an Oxford scholar. When he came to Christ, he came to Christ and discovered the gospel through the writings of Martin Luther. Then when he went out to preach, he faced angry crowds. We have no idea. Preaching in a church like this, it's a holiday. John Wesley, rotten eggs, stones, fists, Sometimes they'd pick up the little preacher and they'd throw him in the freezing waters. He'd have to swim to the other shore. And so did the, all of the Methodists in those days, persecuted, beaten. So great a cloud of witnesses. Our Lord who set his face like a flint to go to Jerusalem. Our Lord's apostle, Paul, Goodness me. In 2 Corinthians 11, verse 24 to 28, just look at me, I'll tell it to you. Because we're going to run out of time before I run out of steam. Listen. He said, I've been beaten with rods. A night and a day I've been in the deep. I've been given the 39 lashes by the Jews. Was it five how many times? Beaten up, kicked left lying outside for dead. The prince of the apostles, the greatest preacher, the greatest evangelist. So great a cloud of witnesses. And then he said in 2 Timothy, you better look at it again, 2 Timothy chapter 4, because it's my theme text, 2 Timothy 4, Verse 6, I'm already being poured out like a drink offering. The time has come for my departure. You think anybody was there to hold his hand? No, he's by himself in a prison. I have fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. He can hear the tread of the soldiers coming down the corridor. And they're coming to take him away and to behead him. The greatest of all the saints. Now there is, in, there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Persecuted, but persevering. What about us? Look at me. 
There are people here today that I can confidently say will be in the kingdom because you have persevered and you will persevere and the word goes into you and you read it at home and you're not shams. There'll be people here who will inherit the kingdom. And here's the greatest hymn, the great British hymn written by the great British preacher who was converted by the Wesley brothers. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear, the hour I first believed. Through many dangers, toils and snares, I have already come, me too. Tis grace that brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home. I've stood before vast audiences not knowing when the gun would ring out. And some have come after me. The Lord has promised good to me. His word my hope secures. He will my shield and portion be as long as life endures. Yea, when this flesh and heart shall fail and mortal life shall cease, I shall possess within the veil a life of joy and peace. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, We've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found. I was blind, but now I see. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We bless you, our Father. We praise you, our Father. We thank you for our Christ, who is mighty to save. And he said, no man can pluck them out of my father's hand. We thank you we are safe as we trust in Christ. And then as we walk the walk, we live the talk. We are encouraged and comforted today to know that even out of this great city of Los Angeles with its crime and its wickedness, there will come a multitude in the last day saved. Dear Father, it is our earnest prayer that when the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven is given to the people of the saints of the Most High, that when the Lord calls out our name, we will say, present and correct. We are here. May the word preached today drop like dew into the hearts of these people. We pray that we will not be hard-hearted like the people were in the wilderness for 40 years. We we pray that we will not be like people who've gone to a concert or to a comedy or to a, a play or to a movie and it's just another thing. But we pray that today this word will find a fertile soil. My Father, bless these dear people. They have been my people for 24 years. I've been their pastor for 17 years. I pray that you will bless them and watch over them and prosper them. And we pray that they will walk hand in hand with Christ 
that they will keep themselves unspotted from the world, that they will be a people who hate lying and hypocrisy and stealing and two-facedness, but they will be a righteous people because of the blood of Christ. So today, my Father, in the name of Christ, I commit them into your hands. Bless them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen, amen and amen. The Carter Report is a self-supporting ministry with a global mission. We believe that the most important thing that we can do in this tremendous hour is to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We do not believe that this is business as usual. We believe that we are living in the closing hours in the history of this world. Bless your heart, friend. Look at the signs that are being fulfilled almost every day. The signs of the times are shouting at us and they're saying, Jesus is coming soon. I want you to be my partner in global mission. I want you to be my partner in helping to tell the world about the coming of Jesus. I want you to be my partner in the preaching of the distinctive truths of the three angels' messages. Please check us out at the new Carter Report website, carterreport.org. We have a special section whereby you can ask questions and I will give you the answers from the living word of the living God. That is the carterreport.org. My friend, we want you to join us in the mission to preach the gospel in China, in India, in Australia, in Africa, in the United States of America, wherever people are lost and wherever people need to hear the good news that Jesus saves. Please check us out. The new Carter Report website, carterreport.org. I want to hear from you today.